Okay, class. So in 9.1, we learned how to add or subtract polynomials. Today, we're going to learn how to multiply. But before we jump into multiplying, let's just take a look and remember what we learned about adding and subtracting polynomials. So if we have something like 2x plus 3 plus 5x minus 10, remember we can only add like terms. What this means is when we're adding these two polynomials, we'll have a 2x plus 5x piece. We're going to add our x terms, and then we'll have a 3 plus negative 10 piece. So the final answer, the final simplified version of this is 7x minus 7, and we can't do any more simplifying than that. So let's look at multiplying, and, and to do this, it might be helpful just to visualize multiplying something like this. So if you're asked to find the area of a rectangle with side lengths x plus 3 and x plus 4, so you have a length of x and then plus 1 unit, 2 units, 3 units, times length of x, 1 unit, 2 unit, 3 unit, 4 units. Well, to find the area, you'd take length times width. So if we do that, look what happens when we break up these little pieces. You're going to have one piece that will be your x times x chunk. That's just x squared. You'll have a few of these other pieces that are going to be x times 1, so x, 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 same down here, x, 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 x. And then you'll have a bunch of little 1 pieces, so 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1. And you have 12 of those total. So your total area is just the sum of all of these different regions. So the total area it's just x squared plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 x pieces, and then you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 1 pieces. So the total area of a rectangle with side lengths x plus 3 and x plus 4 is x squared plus 7x plus 12. And this isn't something I'm expecting you to do, but this is just a way to visualize what you're actually doing. Some of you have worked with algebra tiles before. That's this basic idea. Uh, a lot of the properties of multiplying um, polynomials work like things that you've seen before. So we can use the distributive property. If we have 3 times this trinomial, x plus 4 plus 2y, we can distribute that 3 everywhere. So you bring the 3 to the x, you bring the 3 to the 4, and you'll bring the 3 to the 2y. So when you distribute, you get 3x plus 12 plus 6y. And this is something you've seen before. We can even do it when we have something like this. 3x, we're going to bring 3x times 2x to the second, 3x times negative 5x, and 3x times 3. Remember when we're multiplying uh, exponents, if we have 3x times 2x squared, that's going to give us 6x to the third power. Remember, we're adding this exponent, 2 plus 1. 3x times negative 5x is minus 15x squared. Now, 3 times 3x is just 9x. So we're still using the distributive property like we've done before. But what about something like this? What if we have a binomial times a trinomial? So if we have something like x minus 2 times 5 plus 3x minus x squared. Well, my answer for that is do the exact same thing you did before. Bring in x minus 2 to the 5. Bring in x minus 2 to the negative 3x. Bring in x minus 2 to the negative x squared. You're still distributing. When you do that, you're going to be left with even more distributing to do. Because now you have 5 times x squared, but now you get to distribute again. So you have 5x minus 10. Here you do 3x times x, that's just 3x squared minus 6x. And here you have minus x squared times x minus 2. So you have minus x cubed plus 2x squared. And now we're left playing uh, the game we did in 9.1, where we have to add like terms. We'll write our x to the third term out front. We don't need to combine anything. 3x squared plus 2x squared is 5x squared. 
see we have 5x minus 6x is minus x then we just have minus 10 and we're done so you can distribute the same way if you're doing a binomial times a trinomial but you might get to distribute again and then after that you're left with just <coughs> simplifying excuse me Here's another method for, for multiplying something like this. You don't, you wouldn't need to do this. Uh, some of you are maybe familiar with lattice multiplication. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with that, this might come more naturally for you. I'm just presenting it as an option. I would never make you use this table method, but, but here it is. If we have x squared plus 2x minus 3, we can write each of those uh, terms on one side of our box, and we're multiplying that by 2x minus 1, multiply that uh, vertically on the other side and then you do each of these little multiplication pieces individually so negative it's not a negative I must have just put that in with my marker if you have x squared times 2x that's just 2x cubed now you can take 2x times 2x that's 4x squared 2x times negative 3 is minus 6x negative 1 times x squared is minus x squared negative 1 times 2x is minus 2x, negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. And now you're left with just simplifying. So you have 2x cubed, then you have a 4x squared minus x squared, that's just 3x squared. Now you have negative 6x minus 2x, negative 8x, plus 3 is all that's left. So this table method, uh, I would never require you to do it, but I'm just presenting it as an option for you. If you want to distribute, go right ahead. Um, in effect, you're doing the exact same thing. So here's the big topic of discussion for uh, 9.2 and really uh, all of your math in math class from here on out is this idea of multiplying two binomials together with a process that we call foiling. And what FOIL stands for is first, outside, inside, last. What that means is to multiply two binomials, so something like x plus 2 times x minus 3, the first thing you do is you multiply the first two terms. So the x times the x. So here you'll have x times x or x squared. Then you do the outside terms. So you have x, which is on the far left, times negative 3 which is on the far right, the two outside terms. The two inside terms come next, which you can probably guess are the two terms that are on the inside close together, 2 times x. And then finally, you do your last term, so the last term in each binomial. So you'll do your 2 times negative 3. And then what you do is you add all these pieces up individually, and you simplify. So our simplified answer is just going to be x times x, which is x squared, minus 3x plus 2x, which is negative x, minus 6. So if you'd like, go ahead and pause this video and try this next one on your own. 3x plus 4 times x plus 5. I will do it in a moment. Okay, so here we go. We have our first terms, 3x times x. That's just 3x squared, 3x times x is 3x squared. Then we have our outside terms. 3x times 5. Well, that's just 15x. Then we have our inside terms. 4 times x. That's just 4x. And then we have our last terms. 4 times 5. That's just 20. So simplifying, we have 3x squared plus 19x plus 20. This is foiling. Uh, most of your homework, you'll be doing foiling. Foiling is something you will see in almost every single math class, almost every single uh, chapter um, of math in the next few years of your life. So get familiar with this idea of foiling. It's not too bad if you can just remember first, outside, inside, last, and then you're just simplifying. So 9.3 deals so closely with 9.2, we're just crunching them together. 
So let's just look at some more foiling examples, but we're going to see some interesting things that might come up. So if we have 3x minus 4 times 3x plus 4, we're going to foil this. So first terms, 3 times 3 is 9, x times x is x squared. Outside, 3x times 4 is 12x. Inside, negative 4 plus 3x is minus 12x. You might be able to see where this is going now. Uh, negative 4 times 4 is minus 16. We're left with just 9x squared minus 16 because 12x minus 12x is just 0. Let's look at another one that looks similar. Here we had 3x minus 4 times 3x plus 4. Here we have 5x plus 2 times 5x minus 2. You might have a prediction, um, but let's look at how this works when we FOIL. First times first, 5 times 5 is 25, x times x is x squared. Then we go outside, 5x times negative 2 is negative 10x. Inside is 2 times 5x, it's plus 10x. Last terms, 2 times negative 2 is minus 4. You'll see once again negative x plus 10x that those middle two terms disappear. We get 25, oops. 25x squared minus 4. So here is our pattern. If you don't see it now, if you have a plus b, which is just any value, times a minus b, so here we had 5x plus 2 times 5x minus 2, the end result is just going to be a squared minus b squared. Looking here, a squared, 5, 5x times 5x is 25x squared. 2 times 2 is 4, a squared minus b squared. So if you forget this rule, that's fine, but it's just a nice little shortcut that would eliminate some time when you're foiling. How about here when we have a square of a, of a binomial? Now be careful. If you have something that says x plus 4 squared, please, 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 I'm going to ask nicely, do not square x squared and the 4, call it x squared plus 16. I just, it really just pains me inside as a math teacher. If you have something squared, if you have x squared, what does that mean? That means x times x, right? So if you have x plus 4 squared, the idea is it's just x plus 4 times x plus 4. So now you can FOIL. x times x is x squared. Outside, you have 4x. Inside, you get 4x. And the last terms, we get 16. So you get x squared plus 8x plus 16. Let's look at another one. Remember, don't just distribute that square. 2x minus 6 squared means you're taking 2x minus 6 times 2x minus 6. First times first is 2x times 2x. That's 4x squared. Outside. 2x times negative 6, that's negative 12x. Inside, negative 6 times 2x minus 12x. And last, negative 6 times negative 6 is plus 36. Combine our like terms, 4x squared minus 24x plus 36. <clears throat> so maybe you see a pattern. When we had x plus 4 squared, our end result was x squared plus 8x plus 16. Here's our rule for that. It's just going to be a squared plus 2 times ab plus b squared. If we have something similar, so something like a minus b squared in general, you will always get an answer that looks like a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Once again, similar to our last example, if you forget these patterns, these special patterns, that's fine. Just multiply them. Just foil them. Foiling is not too difficult once you get enough practice with it. But these can serve as nice little shortcuts. So let's just look here and use our shortcut. We have 3n plus 4 squared. Let's not foil it. Let's look at our shortcut. Well, this is something plus something squared. So we can use this one right here. a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Well, a in this case is just 3n. 3n times 3n is 9n 
squared. Here we have the next term will be 2 times a times b. So 2 times a would be 6n times b is 24n. And then b squared is just 4 squared plus 16. So it is a nice little shortcut, but once again, I'm going to say it. If you forget these, that's okay. Just FOIL. Trust your FOILing ability. First, outside, inside, last. So I ask nicely, but I just really want to reiterate this. If you have something like a plus b squared, that does not equal a squared plus b squared. It just doesn't. That's not a legal math move. You have to FOIL it. A plus B squared is A plus B times A plus B. So if you do this on your test, I'm actually going to cry. You will see tears. This is MJ. My name is Max Johnson. This is my version of MJ. I'm going to be crying all over your test. And with that note, uh, we are done with 9.2 and 9.3.